Hi, welcome to Express Photography. I'm Alistair Ben. Welcome to the second part of my Spain workshop diary. Uh, I'm here with Adam Gibbs. Uh, we're running a couple of workshops here in the north coast of Spain. And what I want to do today is look at some incredible colour, some incredible geometry, some beautiful moments in the landscape and understanding just how huge the opportunities are when we're actually out in the landscape, particularly if we don't go in there with any expectations. Now, I did mention in last week's video that I had a pretty bad cold and the first image on the screen now is pretty much how it felt to try and run a workshop when you're feeling pretty awful. Um, so <laughs> forgive me again if my throat is sounding a little bit croaky. Uh, I'm still just at the tail end of things, but feeling a lot better. Thank you very much. Like I said last week, um, when you get great light, things are very easy. We feel energized and excited and we feel very grateful uh, to have incredible conditions. However, it's not always like that. On this particular morning, it was a little bit overcast to start off with, but it did improve so that over the course of a number of hours, the light went from being very heavy and overcast to being almost completely blue sky. Now, they create very challenging uh, and different circumstances. So in this one, you can see I've found this uh, line of water just on the beach there, creating this really, what I find to be quite a striking foreground of just this luminosity shining out of the dark sand there. Uh, no footprints, of course, it was first thing in the morning and the tide had been in and out. Um, reasonable long exposure here just to create a little bit of atmosphere and the clouds have got some nice texture in them and I kind of like this it's a kind of open feel and again with a square composition it's very easy to make these things feel contained as I said the light improved dramatically so that uh, as the clouds were disappearing the sun was coming up from behind a hill and starting to illuminate this beautiful sea stack as you can see also the tide has come in quite a bit um, during the course of the few hours that we've been there and isolating the sea stack an awful lot more. I very much like this composition. I like the fact that the sea stack is completely isolated against the background rocks there and using the 16 by 9 aspect ratio to create this real feeling of expansiveness. So when we talk about the five triggers of luminosity, contrast, color, atmosphere, and geometry, it's how we use those to articulate specific feelings or moods. This is always going to feel open. It's always going to feel upbeat. Uh, the lovely red rocks there, that red color is basically your sunrise. That's compensating for all of that blue light there. Talking of lots of blue light, Many people talk about golden hour and only being out in the morning and the afternoon or the early morning and the evening. Uh, whereas for seascape photography, I believe that the height of the tide is an awful lot more important than the quality of the light. In this photo here, the light was incredibly harsh. The sun was up, it was maybe one o'clock in the afternoon. Everything was very blue. Um, and by making it a black and white here, we totally remove that feeling of the middle of the day. The time of day becomes irrelevant. And what we're left with here is the beautiful foreground rocks interacting with the timing of the wave. Again, time of the shutter speed and the timing of when you push the shutter is incredibly important with seascape photography. Uh, if you get that, uh, no, not wrong, but if you, if you time the waves, so that they're out or not in enough or they're not doing very much, then your photos are going to be very, very different. I really like this one, actually. I really love the kind of mirroring of these angles. And I really like this kind of isolated foreground and a very simple diagonal. So I'm, I'm very fond of this photo. And it was taken at one o'clock in the afternoon. One of the things I've always loved about seascape photography is it's always different, it's always changing. Uh, this beach we've come to this morning, first of all, it's absolutely freezing cold. Uh, we actually de-iced the car before we, uh, we could drive off here. But um, I've been here many times, of course, and the patterns on the beach are always different. The way we're here at the low tide, and you can probably see here, there's some very cool foreground there. And all of these little intricate uh, curves and lines 
create these incredible foregrounds that it's very easy to juxtapose with some nice warm morning light. So shooting here in my uh, varying formats, either 16 by 9 or square, uh, and really happy with the way the luminosity of the water is really standing out against the darker sand here, creating some really interesting compositions. Uh, using my case um, magnetic filter system here with a six stop filter to get shutter speeds in the kind of 20 to 25 seconds mark. Uh, and then I'm using a reverse grad because the, um, the sky is starting to get quite bright compared to the foreground. Now, um, one of the reasons I'm using a longer shutter speed here is the surf is quite a busy area in the frame and we're using the foreground with lots of curves and very sensual lines to lead to the nice pink delicate light in the sky there. And what I'm trying to do is smooth out that transition between land and water and sky by using a longer shutter speed which creates this beautiful transition. So let's have a look at some images and see what we've got. Um, and I'm going to put my camera down before my hand freezes. The next morning was a beauty. Um, probably the best light we had on the entire trip. Uh, just a very gentle dawn. Um, went to a very sandy beach. Uh, not a huge amount of uh, apparent interest in the location but it's become a real favourite of mine on the north coast here. Um, the patterns left by the receding tide create these very geometric and contrasty uh, patterns and shapes and, and lines and curves. And I was drawn immediately to the feeling of almost like uh, a yin and yang type thing of, of shadow and light with just a very gentle rolling surf. And then I really like these clouds at the top. There's enough structure in them and enough shape in them to add dynamics without it overpowering the simplicity of the foreground. Very little processing done to this at all. This beach was just, it, it was the beach that kept on giving on this particular morning. And even as the light was improving, finding some of these lovely incongruous little drainage patterns and understanding that simple flow, simple lines, uh, is all you really need. A square is the ideal format to deal with situations like this. I know we, we were in a 16 by 9 panoramic here, but that's because of the very elongated nature of the foreground pattern here. In this one, I can contain everything in that scene and make it feel really, really quite sort of concise. And this is another one where I very much love these textures. Uh, these very horizontal lines and a very simple composition, again, not really made up of very much. Uh, and this hasn't been processed, this is just the raw file. But simplicity and calmness are really important. And if we think about the assets and the attributes of this, we've got a very delicate sort of pastel color palette. We have very gentle gradations. There's a lot of horizontal lines in this composition, actually, but there are a few subtle diagonals, which I think just help to elevate it a little bit. And again, we've got these nice clouds and the nice luminosity of the beach. So again, we're just using simple elements. Uh, and I understand it takes a certain degree of confidence to make photographs like this. You just have to believe that what you see that you love is worthy of pointing your camera at it. It's as simple as that, really. Uh, a few people on the trips were kind of feeling as if they were struggling, that they weren't they weren't producing anything that was very exciting, whereas, whereas when I was looking at them, I thought they were amazing. So it's a real confidence issue, I think. So the sun's come up, starting to bathe the cliffs behind me in beautiful light. And wherever you get water and light, flowing over sand, you're always going to get these incredible ripples and the way the light's catching the reflections here, the way the light is just catching, you know, the reflected light of the cliffs is catching onto the surface. We're just getting these incredible patterns and the beautiful thing about water flowing is that it's so variable and it's constantly changing and we're just having a whale of a time, the four participants of the group, myself and Adam, we're just playing like kids and that's just the best bit about being out and all of a sudden you forget you've got a cold and 
the fact that your hands are freezing and your feet are wet and cold, everything just disappears. And to just enjoy that sense of playfulness, um, I think this is kind of why we do it, really. And to, but at the same time, you know, some of the images that we're making, they really feel quite significant, you know, like the, there's a definite flow and shape to them. They're the type of things that I could happily stick on the wall. We've been photographing the morning light, we've been photographing the reflections on the beach. You know, it's all about water and light and shapes and patterns. And I've said it so many times, you must be sick of it by now, but luminosity, contrast, colour, atmosphere and geometry, the attributes of the landscape, the way we perceive the landscape and what we feel about it and how we feel a personal connection with some bits of it, it's miraculous. So uh, let's now get back to the group now and uh, yeah, let's have a look at some of these photos. This was a morning that kind of evolved very, very strangely. That We'd had so much rain that the river that flows into this beach had washed out massive areas of the beach and was raging down through the centre of off to the left-hand side of the beach here. This area was very much in the shadow, and I'm really enthralled by this. I, I, I really like this composition. Uh, there's a, almost like a, a sort of curved, almost like a, a sort of funnel, uh, of energy coming down here. Um, so I really, really like this one. And the video that comes along with these files, you know, looking at the, the, the landscape and how fluid it is, it's important for us to remember that there are shots everywhere if we choose to engage with them. There are shots everywhere if we just care to notice. And, and I think that's a massive learning point that you should be taking away from this video. Now, of course, when the light starts to reflect off the cliffs that surround this this uh, little beach here. I noticed that, of course, the, the water was turning into gold. Um, such a beautiful moment. And I noticed a real change in my mood. Uh, I was coming down with the cold at this point in time and was really not feeling 100%. And in this photograph, I think this very much... Uh, expresses how I was feeling kind of dark and a bit sort of chaotic and turbulent uh, whereas this instantly I felt my mood change I felt my, felt my energy coming up and it's the golden light reflecting in this amazing water here um, I don't think it's possible to make a bad photograph in situations like this we've got beautiful golden light we've got beautiful contrast we've got lovely atmosphere We've got some very simple geometry. These waves form and then collapse and form and then collapse. So there's a constant turbulence to the scene. Every photograph is different. A highlight of the trip for me, for sure, just getting stuck into this type of thing. And then another square composition. The square and the 16 by 9, of course, feel incredibly different. 16 by 9, expansive and open, for, uh, 1 to 1 uh, or 6 by 6 compressed and a little bit more compact and just the light shining over this area of beach that had been washed out creating this labyrinth of just incredible patterns and shapes almost feels like a heart here in the center of the frame um, beautiful literally you, you, impossible not to make good photographs i believe uh, I really like this too. This was just uh, the rocks in the north coast of Spain are incredible. And in this particular coast, you've got these beautiful orange, blocky, angular uh, rocks that get partially buried in the, in the sand here. And I really like this. It's just a very simple little composition of a collection of these rocks that are poking up through the dark sand. Uh, luminosity and contrast, of course, and the colour and geometry really working together, I think, to produce something that I really like. Um, and if you don't like it, that's fine, uh, but I do. <laughs> and, and I took a few minutes to spend uh, just having a look at this and pointed out to Adam and we had a big chat about it. Uh, last one from this beach here, just another simple scene using these angular patterns. The, the flow direction is really important. The direction of the angles is always going to be important. And here, the geometry pulls us out left, but everything else pulls us back right. The kind of the contrast in the clouds and the darkness of the waves tipping over, I think really helps to kind of pull us back round to that right hand side. So one of the great things about seascape photography is it's not just the water that's piling up against the coastline, it's the coastline that piles up against the water. 
Um, so at the end of the day, where we are today with our group is just the most incredible geology I've ever seen. There's these tiered strata of red and blue rocks, um, incredible diversity. So what we're doing is we're kind of using all sorts of different focal lengths, all sorts of different aspect ratios from 16 by 9 to 1 to 1 to 4 by 5, and not just being very literal with them, but using rotation as another way to change the angle because luminosity, contrast, colour, atmosphere and finally geometry. So the geometry and the colour here are working together to form these incredible bands and layers of interest and finding ways through the frame and how they interact with the aspect ratio changes how they feel. So basically we're having a whale of a time here. So let's have a look at some of the photos that we're taking. Um, and just to appreciate just how beautiful rocks can be on their own and it's not just all about the ocean when you're shooting seascapes. Now this area of coast is amazing. Um, it's less visited than some of the more well-known areas of the north coast. It's a little cove that's tucked away um, that requires a special tide to get into it uh, but the rocks here are among some of the most incredible I think I've ever seen massive blocks of this beautiful red rock. Uh, I need to ask my brother what it is, but it is insane. Uh, and what I was trying to do here was just to show you the overall scene and then start isolating it in here so you can see uh, a 16 by 9 composition taking out the beach. And what that does is it creates a much more intimate relationship with the content. Moving into square compositions, this is looking up the slope. This whole thing overhangs by perhaps uh, 30 degrees. So once you're stood underneath it, you've got these layered terraces hanging over you. Uh, it feels a little uh, uh, fragile, I suppose, and, and big chunks of it do fall off from time to time. So you need to keep your wits about you. The, the incredible layers of color really from the dark blue uh, compressed layers at the top moving up through this increasing rainbow up to these beautiful reds and yellows and oranges at the top. The place is utterly fascinating. Now this is a photograph taken with the camera level and then once you start to move the camera around rotating it and this is where the Arca Swiss is really really great for just making little uh, uh, angular rotation changes just creating just different angles different uh, ways that the geometry is interacting with the frame. This is something I'm really exploring right now is how content uh, bisects and inter intersects with the frame edges. I think it's really important that we realize that you can rotate your camera through space to create all sorts of different compositions, particularly where geometry is one of the key elements here. 16 by 9 tilted the other way slightly just to create some fairly steep 45 degree angles coming down through here and then 45 degree angles coming down from the other side and it creates this very dynamic and powerful comp. Uh, this is one of my favorite photographs that I've taken at this location. We spent quite a lot of time here. We got there on a tide that was quite high and it allowed us to spend some nice time photographing the, the, the water with the ocean but also once the water goes so far out, it gets very, very messy and scrappy. And you just need to turn around and start looking at something else. This is another beach, one of the more famous ones, incredible rocks. Uh, and finding compositions here is, uh, I'd like to say it's like shooting fish in a barrel, but it's not. It, it can be very confusing and very elaborate. Uh, again, I do like shooting squares at this location. I think it's a really good way to compress the scenes down into a very rational uh, aspect ratio. These are all focus stacked. So I'm taking multiple exposures sort of here, 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 here and here. So it's maybe four or five images. Uh, I prefer to go further back and zoom in to start to, start to compress the layers. I know that Adam's making a video just now where he is shooting more with a wide-angled lens at this location, so it'll be very interesting for you to maybe jump over to Adam's channel and have a look at some of the stuff that he's been doing, because we see very, very differently from each other. 
this is another one that I really like. Again, focus stack of maybe three or four different images to make sure it's sharp front to back. Uh, very simple, uh, very flowing lines, very simple geometry, but it's all about these contrasts between the blue and the orange, um, and then back up to the sort of more angular and jagged scenes. This one I really like some, somehow. Some, it kind of reminds me a bit of a Miro, you know, that sort of one different patch, you know, the orange patch in amongst all this blue linear stuff. Um, there's, there's something about it that does appeal to me, but I'm not quite sure what it is. Uh, it's, very, it's very geometric, I suppose, but it's just that little splash of kind of orangey gold in, in the top there that, that really appeals to me. Um, so sometimes you just have to go with your gut and if you like it, you like it. And if you don't, you don't. Uh, this is the last one for today. Now, this is a focus stack of about eight images. I was, I was really fascinated with this surface. All of these bizarre textures sort of crumbling over each other. And what I wanted to try and do here is I stepped quite far back and zoomed in with my 80 to 400 to really compress these layers and then produce a focus stack to make sure it's sharp front to back. But there's something about this again that I really, really like. And I think this is what photography is all about for me is to go to these places and discover things that are new. The brilliant thing about seascape photography is that every tide that comes in and goes out changes the landscape. Big rocks move around, sand gets moved around, the whole the, the amount of gravel or shingle on a beach can change. So one day you'll go there and it's mounted two meters up against the rocks, and other days you've got whole areas of the beach that you've never seen before. Um, I think this is one of the great things about going to the coast to make photographs. And when you're running a workshop, going there, you're seeing it for the first time. I literally walked around the corner to this particular part of the beach that I've been to dozens and dozens of times and started noticing things that I'd never noticed before. Uh, so I think that's both exciting from a, a, a guide or an instructor or an educator's point of view. It, uh, it allows us to keep things fresh all the time. I absolutely love teaching. I absolutely love running workshops. Um, like I mentioned last week, we're going to be running plenty of these workshops on the north coast of Spain and on the west coast of Scotland. If you're interested in learning seascape photography or going to some of these locations, click on the Express Photography link below and check out what offerings we have and make sure you subscribe to our newsletter because I would let those people know first. Uh, my voice is really starting to crack up. I appreciate you tolerating my croakiness today, um, but uh, that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching and uh, I look forward to bringing you some more photography uh, from the north coast of Spain very, very shortly. Bye for now.